Hello everyone. Uh, I'm here in the Pollock Courtyard. I haven't been here in uh, probably about six weeks, which is probably the longest I've been away from Pollock, probably in nine years. Um, it's a beautiful May day. Uh, it's the exact kind of day that during a, a normal school year, I would dread because it's impossible to stay in studio on a day like today. Um, and so it, they always happen right before finals. And it's the worst time for a beautiful day, but it's hard to argue with how everything looks. Uh, congratulations. Uh, we are very excited that you are about to step into your next thing, your, your next future, the one of many futures. Um, and so I'd like to, to say a few things, uh, a little bit of advice um, to you as you head out into whatever you create. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take some lessons from a podcast that I've listened to for about 10 years. I think I've maybe missed two episodes in 10 years. It's like almost a thousand podcasts. Um, but there's a podcast I listen to called WTF with Mark Maron. Um, and Mark Maron is a comedian. He's a crotchety, grumpy guy. Um, and uh, he usually starts his podcast off with a long kind of monologue. And uh, it's not to everyone's taste, I'll be honest. Um, but the podcast is basically one long interview. It might be an hour and a half um, where people just talk. And what I really love about it are the insights that, that come out of these totally unplanned conversations. And uh, he talks, he started off talking about comedians, and I'm very interested in comedians because it's such a process-driven uh, medium. But he also talks to movie stars, authors, directors, actors. Uh, talked to Barack Obama, most notably. Um, but in all those conversations, there are two things that kind of stand out in terms of through lines to, I'd say, most all of the conversations. And someone's about to start skateboarding, I think, over there. Um, it wouldn't be Pollock without that. But two things come out almost in every conversation that are keys to people's success. Um, one is persistence. Uh, the second is kindness. And so I want to spend a few moments talking about each of those things. Um, in almost every uh, interview, someone in someone's life demonstrates some kind of kindness. Um, it could be it could be words of wisdom. It could be someone lets someone crash on a couch. It could be someone pulls someone aside and just says, you know, you're really good at this. You should try it. Um, but I see that as a through line to almost every conversation. And so I do want to talk a little bit about uh, ways that I would recommend you be kind. Um, and first is being kind to yourself. And this is gonna jump over to something else. With your first paycheck and every paycheck after that, take 10%, put it in savings. Be kind to yourself that way. Build a nest egg. Start a 401k. Start a Roth IRA. Or start not a Roth IRA. That's a hard word to say. Treat yourself well. That's an easy thing. The other thing I would do is with every one of those paychecks, take 1% and put it in a little pocket, okay? And at the end of that year, take that 1% and give it to someone. Um, when My first job, uh, when I got out of grad school, I made $34,000 a year, which is more money that I found out later than my either of my parents together had ever made in a year. Um, I had no idea. But if I'd taken 1% of that, that salary at the end of the year I would have three hundred forty dollars not a lot of money not a, not a lot of money but think about where we are right now um, and that three hundred forty dollars might buy school lunches for a kid for a semester or a year um, every little thing helps and so just one percent put that in a separate kitty and at the end of the year give it to someone okay could be a thing could be a cause could be a person but practice that kind of kindness. Practice it. Practice it for yourself. Practice it for others. The other thing that I want to talk about is persistence and hard work. Um, you all know this already. This is what we traffic in in interiors in design. The hard work is the first ingredient. It's not the only ingredient, but it's the first ingredient. 
um, is necessary when you want to define your own future. And with this degree, you have that potential. You can define, you define your own future. The more that future diverges from the standard, the harder you have to work. Um, people like shoeboxes. And if you fit into a shoebox, um, the world knows how to, how to stack those together, right? But most of you didn't come to VCU to find a shoebox. Right? Um, and so the more that shoebox, or the more your career fits into something other than that, the harder you have to work. So if it's difficult, that's, that's, that should be expected. The more you can, the more different your path is, the harder you'll need to work. And that should be seen not as a detriment or an obstacle, but as an opportunity. Okay? Because if you're choosing something that's really important to you, that hard work will not feel like hard work. Um, two other things with um, that, that podcast I mentioned, uh, um, WTF also brought a couple people into, into my thinking um, who addressed this, this, this uh, issue of persistence. And one is Brene Brown, probably a lot of you have come across Brene Brown, and another is the actress Laura Linney, who I just listened to the other day. But Brene Brown, you're probably familiar with her discussions about vulnerability. Um, and uh, she gives lots of talks to all sorts of different groups about vulnerability. And she said there are three components to vulnerability, um, risk, uncertainty, and exposure. Right? And she's given this talk to, to thousands of people, and she always asks the question, is there ever a situation where vulnera vulner vulnerab vulnerability is not a component of bravery. That's not a component of, of courage. And no one's been able to tell her a situation where you can be brave without being vulnerable. I think that's important. Um, because what we do in design is a practice in vulnerability, a practice in bravery, right? Because every time you make something new, it's a risk. You don't know if it's gonna work. Every time you make something new, there's uncertainty. And every time you stand up and present that, you're exposing yourself. And so these four years have been exercises in vulnerability and bravery. And keep that in mind as you go forward. Um, because it's, you're gonna be challenged every day. Even in the most mundane tasks, there will be opportunities to, to, to take, take a risk, to expose yourself, to tap into the uncertainty. And that's where the real that's where the real design comes out. That's where real life comes out. The other thing that, that I took away from this podcast and this, the actress, Laura Linney, she was talking about in almost every production she's in, there's about a period about three weeks in where she just hits a wall and she says, this is not gonna work. Um, and she calls this, this period the, the discomfort. Um, and the importance for her to be someone who can move through that discomfort and the importance of moving through that discomfort. And a lot of it has to come down to expectations. Um, I find when I am discouraged it's because my expectations are not being met. And so it's an opportunity to reevaluate those expectations. Why am I expecting this all to work the way it should be working when the world isn't privy to what my expectations are? And so it's an opportunity to change the way I'm thinking about how this should work. And usually in every project that, that I'm in, I hit a wall where my preconceptions don't work. My ideas aren't the way I thought they, they should be. And it's an opportunity to actually change and actually engage with what's, what's, what's at hand instead of engaging with what my brain thinks is at hand. Um, and being able to kind of move through that process, move through that wall that's where the real design, that's where the real growth, that's where the real change, that's where the real life happens. So when you feel that discomfort, ask yourself where it's coming from. And if it's because the expectations are, are, are artificially layered on, that might be a sign. Um, with that, meet people halfway. Um, you will come to every situation um, with something. Other people have something too. And if you're able to kind of move through those expectations and you're able to kind of be open to another possibility, 
something really spectacular can happen. Um, you have four years of learning, four years of practicing, four years of effort, um, and now you know better. You have an obligation now to share that, that, that knowledge, to bring what you know into the world and it happens in the office, it happens in personal life, it happens in civic life. Um, that's a great responsibility, that's a great obligation. Take it seriously, be generous with it. Um, work hard, be kind. Those two ingredients can be transformative. So thank you for spending these, these years with us. Um, don't be a stranger, tell us about how things are going send us business cards every time you get a new business card send us one i'd like to make a wall and put them all on there um but take what you've learned here and multiply on it um, that's the real measure of a person that's the real measure of a place um and i can't wait to to see what you produce so bye-bye